What is going on? Jason from YouTube here talking about the stock market coming up this week. We had a good long weekend. We didn't trade Friday. And so here we are in the pre-market and just about everything is green. So let's uh, let's talk real quick and, and see what I see going on for today and the week coming up. So as always, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, just some guy on YouTube throwing out links in my description below for Patreon. You wanna sign up with Weeble, get a couple free stocks when you sign up, all that good stuff. Voyager, if you're interested in Bitcoin or, or cryptocurrency, all that stuff in the description. So we are in the pre-market as i'm recording this video and just about everything is green i mean stuff on my watch list is green everything i own is green um, the only thing that's a little down is genius and so i may pick up some genius uh today not that it was on my radar to buy but just because it's so undervalued um so the main two stocks i'll be looking at like and i mentioned this last night in my live it will be microvision nano this week i think nano uh there's a lot of good volume uh thursday and so right before the the market closed for the weekend a lot a lot of good volume heading into nano finally uh we know it's a very good company and then microvision i mean if you watch this channel you know i'm talking about microvision almost every single day so uh, as I look at the market, though, holistically, what am I expecting this week? Well, we had job numbers come out over the weekend. We did a video over that, and basically it looked very positive. You know, we'd almost added 1 million jobs, which that's good news. But as you looked at um, different things that Jerome Powell has mentioned, you know, like we want to make sure all races are employed equally. Well, we're missing the mark there. We want to get back where we were, um, you know, 14 months ago. Well, we're still missing the mark there a lot. We want to make sure that people are not underemployed. We're really missing the mark there. In fact, part-time jobs are up in March 2021 compared to March 2020. And so part-time jobs are good for high school students, but they're not good for all those people who lost their jobs. And again, as you look industry by industry and you think about okay how many restaurants lost jobs this this last year oh my goodness how many retail how much uh financial sector and you start thinking locally like well, well yeah there have been a couple you know clothing stores that went out of business oh yeah there have been a couple banks that went out of business in my area and so as you think about the people who work at those jobs those are full-time employees those are people who need those jobs to support their family and they're getting hired back at a new part-time job. They're getting hired back at, you know, the Bucky's that just opened up by you. They're getting hired at, um, you know, something that's not going to pay the bills all the way because they're underemployed. And so that still makes us nervous for the economy as a whole. Although things are getting better because we are adding jobs, we are definitely not out of the woods yet. And I guess as, as someone who lives in Florida, where things are, are very, very opened up, our education secretary came out the other day and basically said, you know, we're not even sure if we're going to offer online schooling next year. And where some of you live in Wisconsin or California or, or, or a state like that, and it's like, we're only doing online schooling this year. You know, that, that the thought of on-campus education is is super far from our mind and so uh, as we look again at the market the economy as a whole we are seeing positive trends but i'm not ready or hopefully we're not ready to jump all in green like we did september october november december january and into the middle of february I guess the best thing I can think about this market is easy come, easy go. And so if we continue to see all this green on Monday and the market ends up, you know, two, one, two percent higher and our personal portfolios, we know if, if it's one to two percent personal portfolios, we're going to play a little riskier. So we're going to be up five or six percent. And we see this throughout the week. Eventually, we're going to have a major correction, just like we did uh, what was that? The, the, the middle beginning of, of March, you know, we saw all this red. We saw three days of four days of big green. And then we gave it all right back with, with another two, three weeks of red. So it wouldn't bother me if we continue to trade sideways and up. Now, go back, rewind the tape two weeks ago when I did this Monday morning opening video. Uh, I told you that I thought the worst 
was just about over, that we would continue to trade sideways for a couple days, which is what we did a whole lot of last week. And so these sideway days, I'm liking them because we're heading back in the right direction. That as you look at the, the stocks that most of us are invested in, those growth stocks that we're invested in, we're starting to trend in the right direction, but it's not so crazy that we're headed for a major fall. Now, we talk about Microvision a lot on this channel, and obviously when something is driven by a big announcement or a big contract or a big news deal, you always put an asterisk right next to it. But just as an example, when you're trading at $12 and you get a 50% gain intraday or in, in one hour, really, right before closing, you go from $12 to $18, you're gonna give some of that back. Like nine out of 10 times, you're gonna give some of that back unless you continue to, to, to ride that hype, unless you continue to throw out more good news. And so when Microvision runs from 12 to 18 and then back down to 16, it's like, what just happened? 20% is, is about normal after a major uh, a run up. And so if you can hold at only giving 20% back after a 50% run, whether that's intraday or a whole week, it's pretty good if you can only hold 20. That is a very, very bullish sign. What makes me nervous is if we run up 50% and then give 50% back within the next day or two. And so uh, I think the next couple of days for Microvision are gonna be very, very important where if we continue to give back, yeah, we could come crumbling back down to 13, $14. But if we can hold that 16 and say, hey, we took 50, we gave 20 back, we're holding at 16 now, which again, pre-market, it looks like it's gonna hold. Just about everything is up. Nothing's up too, too crazy. Um, the only thing that's down is Genius, which again, was not really on my radar to buy, but it, it may be on my radar uh, this coming week. So uh, as far as things that we're looking at this week, um, uh, again, I, I'm hoping that we continue to trade sideways, that we continue to gain slowly, that we do not see the crazy rises uh, industry by industry. And again, you got to remember, we have not been trading for a few days now that, that, uh, you know, the president gave a speech at the end of last week. And so it was like, well, how are we going to factor this in? Is that still a, an issue? You know, who's getting all this money with the EVs? And I told you, for me, I'm not going to go chasing every single, uh, EV stock. Are there certain winners out there that, that may jump 50% this week? Maybe, but there's also a lot that are going to get hurt. There's also a lot of workhorses out there where you 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 look at it and you go, this could this totally makes sense. Everything about workhorse makes sense. Everything about workhorse partnering with USPS makes sense. And then they don't. And then you're sitting there wondering, what just happened? And so as I look at what stocks I want to be on to be in over the next three months, six months, three years, six years uh, within the EV space, there are certain companies I really like. I do like Lucid Air. I do like Neo, and then I like industry leaders. And that's the industry leaders in China, the industry leaders here in the U.S. Tesla, ChargePoint. Those are the people that I like. And so I don't know if I'm going to go chasing every single plug, fuel cell, uh, and I should have written them all down, but but all those little stocks. And again, some of them I'm invested in because I like their company. I like what they're doing. But just like with Workhorse, I can really like their company. I can like what they're doing. I like their product. And I can like the news and the rumors that's swirling around them. And the next thing you know, it, it doesn't come to fruition. Even uh, the XL. XL we got out of early back in like December. You know, it was one of the it was one of the runs ones that ran with all the EVs, right? Buying gets elected November, all the EV stocks are going up. Then somewhere around December, it was like, you know, Excel has made several purchase or, or several orders uh, with companies to do test runs, five trucks, ten trucks, fifteen trucks, and then they didn't reorder, and that was a major red flag. And so as I look at these companies. If they have gotten orders, but they don't get that big reorder, they don't get that purchase order for a hundred or a thousand or ten thousand, that to me is going to scream pump the brakes. Because as I look at Tesla, and I posted this on on a YouTube post the other day, 
that there was a, a, a fleet of Model 3 taxis coming out. That as Tesla continues to get better in the automotive driving space, which you know we can debate about LiDAR and all that stuff, but Tesla is obviously uh, one of the ones leading in that space as the robo taxi network you know, continues to get closer and closer, that Tesla is the play for the future and the present. That, that they are the ones who have, even though I know it's like, you're telling me a stock that $700 has the most room to grow. You know, is Tesla going to go to $1,500 before, you know, plug or charge point can double? It's like, well, I mean, Kathy Wood put Tesla going like 3x, 4x here, here in the next four or five years. And so she's been right about a lot of things. And obviously, again, that's what that's what things lining up but as you look at tesla's history things have lined up for them that if you go and ask any you know anybody under 25 hey realistic dream car under 100,000 their answer is probably going to be a tesla and as those people get 28 29 30 and they're able to get money to buy their dream car I just see more and more Teslas being bought. Even people our age, mid thirties. If we could have any car, what well, you know, realistic car, it'd probably be a Tesla again. And so, I, I, I'm not ready to throw all my money at Tesla, but I'm starting to think: when Microvision sells, am I still going to have high risk tolerance, or am I going to look for safer plays? Because Ultimately, I'll be having a lot more money then than I do now. Or maybe I'll be looking at some of the dividends, which I'll be releasing a dividend video later this afternoon, so make sure you check that out. And so maybe dividends will, will, will be the play. And I, I guess as I look at the, the stock market, um, there are a lot of stocks that I think are traps. They're, gonna, they're in industries where winners going to take most and there's no clear-cut winner right now. That's very, very hard to look at You know, these 10 companies. They all have good websites. They all have good CEOs. They all have you know, good investors. And, and you know that only one or two of them are going to make it. And then as you look at what space they're occupying, they're coming after a company like Tesla that has huge market share already. They're coming after ChargePoint that has huge market share already. And so that's gonna make me pump the brakes a little bit on EVs as an industry. Um, so again, as what am I looking at this week? I'm looking at consolidating some of my stocks and I, I did you know, the full video on it yesterday. Um, th that was the live. I'm gonna look to consolidate down some of my stocks. I like to be, um, I, you know, I, I say I like to be in the 25 to 30 ballpark, but I'm getting up to like 50 right now. And so I need to trim that back big time. And that will allow me to go in those deep conviction stocks specifically right now, going to be putting more and more in microvision until they sell. And then after they sell, we'll look and see where the market's at. But, uh, again, let's focus back on the video, on the importance at hand for this week. If we start getting too green, I'm not going to chase any stock. I'm not going to chase anything. I will just hold because if we start going too fast, I'm expecting a pullback. If we can see that kind of sideways trading, like if I see the NASDAQ up a half percent, maybe the Dow goes, you know, uh, you know, 0.1% down or maybe 0.1% up and my personal portfolio is up, you know, 1.5% or 2%, that would be the best bull sign for me. Now, is it fun when we see those massive green days when the Nasdaq's up, you know, two percent and the Dow's up two percent and our personal portfolios are up seven eight percent? Those are fun, but if we see two or three days like that, we're going to give a lot of it back. Things are not that optimistic right now. I guess that's why I'm starting, you know, with the job numbers and, and even something that we talked about a little bit in our live yesterday. I want to get down to the end of this video. I know I rambled there for a little bit. Um, there was a video uh, I watched of someone looking up Google Trends, meaning that you can look and see how many times a word has been Googled, and you can compare that to this month, to last month, to last year, and there are a lot of financial terms that are down. There are a lot of YouTube channels right now. Their views 
are down holistically because people are just not as interested in investing right now as they were six months ago. And so when you start looking at stocks specifically, that people are not Googling Tesla stock as much as they were three days ago. People are not Googling, um, you know, uh, how should I invest in the stock market with my stimulus as much as they were three months ago. And so uh, as you look at the market holistically, um, this is good and bad because what the old Wall Street hedge funds are looking at is, okay, the, the GameStop, like GameStop's not getting searched anymore. AMC stock is not getting searched anymore. Meme stocks are not getting searched anymore. And so I think those uh, hedge funds in, in Wall Street is finally looking at, okay, the market's going to return to normal for them. That they are no longer in fear of getting short squeezed on every single stock, uh, uh, you know, at, at the drop of a hat, at the drop of a tweet or a, or a Reddit post. And again, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong. I'm just telling you where we're at, that a lot of those newer investors have either now become seasoned investors, and so they're not Googling those kind of things anymore, or this didn't work out for them, and you're actually seeing cryptocurrency kind of, I don't want to say take the lead because even that is not going up like crazy, but you're seeing cryptocurrency um, start to get more uh, get more searches in the queue in Google. And again, it's not off the charts. It's not anything compared to where GameStop was, you know, two months ago or AMC was two months ago. But as you look at how many times GameStop and AMC are being searched, it's how many times they're being searched four months ago, which is very, very little. So anyways, just some things I'm looking at, just some thoughts I'm going on in my head. Uh, I did not want this to go this long, but here we are. Thank you guys so for watching so much. Let me know in the comments below, what stocks are you looking at this week? What are you looking at buying? What are you looking at selling? Uh, what do you think the market's gonna do? Again, if I were to have to give a short answer, I think we'll trade sideways, but a little bit up, which is a very, very bullish sign long term and which is a good good sign it's where i want the market to be i don't want to get too green too fast and have to give it all back like we just did over the course of the last six weeks for the course of the last year where it was all green we had to give it all back you know i'm ready just to slowly take my profits again by slowly i mean you know 20 percent gain this year would be nice or more anyways um you guys have a good day have a good week and i'll see you all in my next video